We're back again. I've been asked to do one last episode, which is number eight. Although last episode we said it was the last one, we're happy that we can share just one more with you. This one is also a very important one on how to be ready for the end time. The title is, How Do I Keep the Sabbath Holy? We've learned the importance of the Sabbath. So let's just notice some of the Bible guidelines on how we can keep that holy day. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you that we're coming to the conclusion of this wonderful journey through the scriptures. We thank you very much that we've learned some things we need you to help us with. And as we look at the Sabbath, a very holy day that came even before sin entered this world, we pray that you'll teach us to keep that day so holy by spending time entirely with you, without any interruptions, without anything that will separate us from you. We pray that you'll guide us through the word of God by your Holy Spirit and convict us to change where the change is needed so that we may be among those that do your commandments and will enter in through the gates into that beautiful city you prepared for us. Thank you for hearing our prayer and promising to guide us into all truth, in Jesus' precious and lovely name. Amen. How do I keep the Sabbath holy? Well, Proverbs says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. If you want to be happy, keep the law. You know, if you're driving in a car and you're keeping the speed limit and a policeman comes, you're happy, you're calm. But if you're breaking the law, you're nervous, you're afraid and you're guilty if you get caught. We've noticed one of our key texts, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. This is what Jesus wants. He's not willing that any should perish. He would have all men to be saved. But the conditions are the commandments of God and it's in his strength and power that he promises. Proverbs 19.16 tells us, he that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. But he that despises his way shall die. So we have a choice. We're at the crossroads at every temptation, at every challenge we have that Satan brings in our path. Will we follow God? We notice in the book of Genesis that on the seventh day, God ended his work. He didn't end it on the sixth day. He ended it on the seventh day. He didn't make anything, but he did create a day of rest, a day of sanctification, a day of holiness where we can worship him. And he rested on the seventh day, not that he was tired, but to give us an example from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, made it holy, set it apart for a holy use, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Let's notice this word sanctify. It means future, to set apart as sacred, consecrate, dedicate, to observe as holy, keep sacred, to honour as sacred, hallowed, to consecrate. That's what Jesus did to the Sabbath. It's there, and we noticed in earlier episodes that what God has blessed, he's blessed it forever. And on the new earth, we will worship on the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, the commandment says. When does the day begin? When does it end? Leviticus 23.32 gives us an indication. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. This was a ceremonial Sabbath, but the weekly Sabbath was the same. In creation, there was an evening and a morning. The first day, second day, right through to the seventh day. So the day in Bible reckoning from creation started at the sunset, and it finished at the following sunset. So the beginning of the day was at the evening and then the morning came afterward. We notice the Bible describes when even is. It says, at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed of devils. So it's from sunset to sunset, 24 hours. How do we prepare for the Sabbath? This is important. In Exodus 16.4, it was talking about the time before the Ten Commandments were given on Mount Sinai. They'd been given in Genesis and passed down from family to family, father to son. But the Ten Commandments were about to be written by Jesus on stone. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which you will bake today, 
and see that which ye will see, or boil that which ye will boil, that's what that word means, and that which remaineth over life up for you to be kept until the morning. They cooked on the Friday, on the preparation day as, as it's called in the New Testament, so that they wouldn't have to do that work on the Sabbath. And that's what we should do too. The Lord is no less particular now in regard to his Sabbath than when he gave the foregoing special directions to the children of Israel. He required them to bake that which they would bake and see that is boil that which they would see on the sixth day preparatory to the rest of the Sabbath. Those who neglect to prepare for the Sabbath on the sixth day and who cook food upon the Sabbath violate the fourth commandment and are transgressors of God's law. All who are really anxious to observe the Sabbath according to the commandment will not cook any food upon the Sabbath. That's clear, isn't it? They will, in the fear of, of that God who gave his law from Sinai, deny themselves and eat food prepared upon the sixth day, even if it is not so palatable. God forbade the children of Israel baking and boiling upon the Sabbath. The prohibition should be regarded by every Sabbath keeper as a solemn injunction from Jehovah to them. Make Friday the preparation day. On Friday, let the preparation for the Sabbath be completed. See that all the clothing is in readiness and that all the cooking is done. Let the boots be blackened and the baths be taken. It is possible to do this. If you make it a rule, you can do it. The Sabbath is not to be given to the repairing of garments, to the cooking of food, to pleasure seeking, or to any other worldly employment. Before the setting of the sun, let all secular work be laid aside and all secular papers be put out of sight. All our business papers, newspapers, put them out of sight on the Sabbath. Parents, explain your work and its purpose to your children and let them share in your preparation to keep the Sabbath according to in many families on Sabbath, boots and shoes are blackened and brushed and stitches are taken, all because these little odds and ends were not done on Friday. They did not remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. On Friday, the clothing of the children is to be looked after. During the week, they should be all laid out by their own hands under the direction of the mother so that they can dress quietly without any confusion or rushing about and hasty speeches. There is another work that should receive attention on the preparation day. On this day, all differences between brethren whether it be in the family or in the church, should be put away. That's an interesting commander. That's so there's no ill feelings when we're at church. We're at peace with God and with man. While cooking upon the Sabbath day should be avoided, it is not necessary to eat cold food, especially in winter time or in cold countries. In cold weather, let the food prepared the day before be heated. So just heat it up and let the meals, though simple, be palatable and attractive. Provide something that will be regarded as a treat, something the family do not eat every day. Make the Sabbath a special meal, an enjoyable day. Let not the precious hours of the Sabbath be wasted in bed. Some people like to sleep on Sabbath. Well, it is a rest, but not that type of rest. It's a rest from the cares of this world. On Sabbath morning, the family should be astir early. Get up early. If they rise late, there's confusion and bustle and preparing for breakfast and Sabbath school. That's not the spirit of the Sabbath. There's hurrying, jostling and impatience. Thus unholy feelings come into the home. The Sabbath thus desecrated becomes a weariness and it becomes its coming as dreaded rather than love. Sabbath is not something you just prepare for when this comes. It's something that you prepare for all through the week so that we can gain the blessings. There's many blessings, showers of blessings that God loves to give us on that day. It's the best day of the week by far. God has put a blessing in it, but we must be careful not to let Satan snatch it out of our hands. Wear comely garments for the house of worship. Many need instruction as to how they should appear in the assembly for worship on the Sabbath. They are not to enter the presence of God in the common clothing worn during the week. All should have a special Sabbath suit to be worn when attending service in God's house. There are special clothes and different cultures have different types of clothes, but we know which are the ones that are suitable for Sabbath. They are the ones that are dress clothing. Jesus we notice, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. But the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Some people get hurt at church and then they stop going 
that's not what God asked to do. Jesus was really hurt at church. When he was healing, he was criticised. They went to stone him at Nazareth after he spoke, but he never stopped going to church. There may be someone watching who have suffered some things at church. They may have seen some things at church that are not good. Well, Jesus, he experienced that. He understands you. But come back. The Sabbath is a place where we need to be together. Don't forsake that assembly together. We need to grow together. We are a family. We are a body, the Bible tells us. And we need other people to help us in our spiritual walk. Never entertain the thought that you can be Christians and yet withdraw within yourselves. Each one is a part of the great web of humanity. And the nature and quality of your experience will be largely determined by the experiences of those with whom you associate. Then let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Clear counsel from Ellen G. White. Those who are of the household of faith should never neglect the assembling of themselves together. For this is God's appointed means of leading his children into unity. In order that in Christian love and fellowship they may help, strengthen and encourage one another. Let's do that rather than be critical, looking for faults. Some people go to church, all they want to do is find the faults. The Bible says don't do that. Encourage one another. You know, the disciple had faults, but Jesus was patient with them. And we should be patient with our family, with our children, and with others that are learning how to keep the Sabbath. Exodus tells us that on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. It says, if you turn your foot away from the Sabbath, have you been breaking the Sabbath? Or maybe you've never heard about the Sabbath. It says, turn your foot away from it. Don't trample on it. Don't stand on it. Don't put it aside. Don't ignore it. For doing your pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight. It is a delight. The holy of the Lord honourable and shall honour him not doing thine own ways. Don't do your own ways on the Sabbath. Don't do what you want to do on the Sabbath. Do what the Bible says. Not finding your own pleasure. Not speaking your own words. Don't be indifferent to children's activities. This is a counsel to parents. I've found that on the Sabbath day many are indifferent and do not know whether where their children are or what they're doing. Parents, above everything, take care of your children upon the Sabbath. Do not suffer them to violate God's law, His holy day by playing in the house or out of doors. You must just as well break the Sabbath yourself as to let your children do it. And when you suffer your children to wander about and suffer them to play upon the Sabbath, God looks upon you as Sabbath breakers. Every working of Christ in miracles was essential. This is on the Sabbath. And was to reveal to the world that there was a great work to be done on the Sabbath day for the relief of suffering humanity. We can visit hospitals and those that are sick. Doctors and nurses sometimes need to do essential work on the Sabbath. But the common work was not to be done. Pleasure seeking, ball playing, swimming was not a necessity but a sinful neglect of the sacred day sanctified by Jehovah. How often does this happen? We need to be careful to guard our church, our children, and those from defiling the Sabbath. It's a responsibility for all of us. These are some of the, the challenges that we face, but the joy of the Sabbath can never be full unless we guard against these things. What a shame to be going to church every Sabbath and miss out on eternity because we haven't taken the spirit of being with Jesus and guarded against the things that Satan will try to push in there so that we feel comfortable, we feel as though we're all right, but really we're just as lost as someone who never ever came near the, the word of God or the church. And our, the text that has been a theme right through, let's repeat it again, blessed are they that do his commandments, including the Sabbath and all his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. What a tree that will be. Eternal life will be granted to those that eat that fruit and may enter in through the gates into the city. May that be our experience, each one. As we've gone through these episodes, we've seen how to be ready. The end is near. How do we prepare? Do you want to prepare by keeping the Sabbath and all of the other things that we've noticed? Staying away from idolatry, staying away from covetousness, looking to Jesus, looking to the joys of following him, looking to the happiness and peace that can come only through obeying, trusting and obeying him. Do you want to be among those that are going to be ready at the coming of Jesus? I challenge you and I challenge myself that I will do everything in my power to abide in Christ and allow him to show me the path 
a straight and narrow path that guides us to eternal life. God bless you. Thank you for joining us for these eight episodes and we look forward to seeing you in the kingdom by God's grace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the instruction you've given us. Thank you for the blessing of the Sabbath. Thank you that it is a day of, that no other day can take the place of. And we look forward to that first Sabbath that we can have with you when you come to take us home. May each one of us, by God's grace and your saving power, and the promises of God that cannot be broken carry us through to that time. Thank you for being patient and guiding us, and thank you for forgiving our sin. In Jesus' precious and most holy name, amen.